Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the official ARC podcast number 57. My name's Brad, and I'm here with the core team. Your host tonight, as always, our illustrious leader, Atlas. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you for the introduction, Coach Brad. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming tonight to the podcast over here at ARC, and this is number 57. Very glad and very happy to have you all here. If you're looking at the screen, if you're here live with us, we have a Spark price pool of 124 ARC. So we are continuing to to see the growth happening, and uh, we're going to do the giveaway for that shortly. It's been uh, been a nice day, a little bit of a slow volume uh, that we're seeing uh, happening here on the chart. We understand that it's the holidays, Christmas. A lot of folks are taking sort of the the long bridge till uh really you know the the new year but uh you know the liquidity controllers doing its work let me zoom out a little bit you know we are having that dynamic range not pegged letting you know the flow really be organic as to the price range you know we're having uh as you can see here we're, we're having more sales through the system as we encourage that that one-to-one ratio so we're seeing that happen. It's part of the whole thing. You know, we didn't want to to reach a fifteen, eighteen, twenty dollar price uh, with a big pump and then a a, a heinous, you know, massive uh, dump. You know, the mechanisms have been set all the way from having the tokens after launch be purchased and go directly to the buyer's Arc Vault account. So um, you know, we're we're seeing it take place. Obviously, as we start to gear up. Uh, going to more MAs, understanding that folks are going to be coming back to their desk and becoming more involved in their investments, we are expecting to have uh, more of a buy pressure uh, coming through. Uh, but the uh, system's doing what it's supposed to. It is doing buys uh, throughout these uh, sales that you're seeing happen on the chart. And uh, if you go into the blockchain, you can actually see that, that we're there buying and uh, maintaining uh, a healthy range. So it doesn't run. Uh, very fast, very volatile in either direction, just staying at that nice, stable rate of return. So, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if Mr. Brett Norton has uh, any updates on his side that he'd like to come and uh, share with us. Yeah, th- thanks, Atlas. Um, it's been a little bit quieter day. You know, we're working on some website upgrades, um, really uh, engaging with the, uh, the developer on the web app side. So that's good to see that's still moving and something we're looking forward to in the beginning of the year. I know we've talked a lot about it, um, starting to, you know, engage there and take shape. Um, obviously, with the holidays, there's a little bit of a slowdown in, in resources and, you know, people aren't always on the regular schedules. So we're just kind of working around that and um, getting, you know, major um, things accomplished where we can. Uh the, the tech support tickets are obviously a priority. So if there's, um, you know, any issues that you see or have, um, whether that's UI or, you know, something uh, seems to be glitching or something like that, we're handling those over in our tech support channel. Uh, if you're not sure where that is, the admins can help steer you over there. Um, and I think a lot of people that were concerned about the auto allocation system, we've made some streamlining to that, improve the, uh, the timing of the auto allocation. So, we're looking forward that to just kind of getting smoothed out a little bit. Um, we are looking at the gas fee situation. We obviously can't make any adjustments right away. We're kind of seeing and taking some history from that to see where uh, if we can reduce the, the gas fees, we will. Um, if not, it's just, you know, the price of automation. Uh, I'm personally running a campaign with the auto allocation. I haven't had any issues. I know some people were concerned about a slight delay. Um, we've moved that up now to when the auto allocation runs. Sometimes it runs a little earlier now. And so we're really trying to get that dialed in and just kind of fine tune. So that's a, you know, a more convenient system. Um, I think from a kind of a benefit standpoint, the auto allocation is not for everyone, um, but it is for people. Maybe they're busy and they uh, have, you know, real world jobs and they can't always make it to, you know, the vault to take an action to do the allocation. Um, and some days they might miss a, you know, a half day or a full day of that uh, compound withdrawal schedule. And, uh, you know, that could affect them. So for the right people, it has the, the cost benefit. 
Um, but for some people, manual's still fine. And, uh, you know, I think we haven't had any issues um, with people running uh, the manual CWR schedule. So, yeah, things are looking good, um, stable. I like the price chart. Uh, we saw some, you know, sell-offs happening around the holiday uh, with, as you mentioned, not a lot of people, you know, back at their desk. People obviously um, spending money over Christmas, not necessarily crypto money. Um, but I think we'll see that kind of stabilize as the week goes on. And I think, you know, people uh, that are zooming out a little bit and realizing we're only, you know, a week and a few days uh, into the project, um, you can see that, you know, we've had a little bit of a correction off the top, which is maybe 6% or so at the most, 5 6%. So I think things um, are, you know, where we kind of intended them to be in terms of, you know, stabilizing within a band. Uh, and then seeing, you know, as these um, people come back and investors sort of, you know, wake back up again after the holidays, we'll see a more balanced um, buy and sell ratio coming in. Uh, and so I, I think we'll, you know, we'll we'll see a little uptick if we can uh, get people in the beginning of the year to uh, get in front of ARC and, and people get active again and telling people about the investment opportunity here. So, yeah, overall, everything's looking great and uh, just working through some of the, the UI developments and things that people have sent in for feature requests um, and then getting started on the, uh, the web app. So that's what we're looking forward to right now. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for, for that update. And, yeah, we're very excited because we, we understand that you know, our mobile application, you know, putting that into everyone's device in their palm of their hand, that they're going to be able to to be so effective to to get the regular folks that we always talk about here, the average, you know, Joes, the nurses, the uh, Uber drivers, the gardeners, the warehouse workers, folks that are looking for that passive income. And it is our our prime directive, guys, to, to really get in front of them and, and do it in a seamless way that you know, they can understand that that's, you know, native to, to them. Everybody has a phone. Everybody uh, has a ton of apps that they use uh, in their daily lives. And uh, to have one for your investing, just like you would have them for your, your uh, bank and your cell and everything that you're doing in your, in your life. Uh, we, we understand that this is going to fit exactly their lifestyle and, 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 you know, having the automation, having all these features available for them is, is going to be huge. So, um, you know, we're, I think, ahead of our, our roadmap, and uh, we, we want to keep it that way. We've seen some improvements. The Dow just came out two days ago. Uh, looking forward to our, our first vote uh, on that as well. So, look, let's go ahead and, and uh, do the Spark Rewards, if you guys are ready. Or let's see, if, does anyone have a question before we, we do the Spark? Yes, yes. I, I have a question. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's about the um. I'm new to Arc Five, right? Now, do what I still have to purchase an NFT to participate to get in, or can I buy the tokens and still um, allocate them to the vault? I'm kind of confused on how that works. Well, the the main investment here uh, is your. Can I call you Nigel? That's how your name is said. Yep. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Hi, I'm Atlas. Nice to meet you, sir. Look, the, the, the primary investment here is is really to purchase the ArcFi token. And when you do that, uh, you can't do it on PancakeSwap. You have to come to our ROI DAP. It's, it's listed here. And uh, you can see the white paper and a lot of the information. But w when you do the purchase, the tokens will be allocated and deposited for you in your Arc Vault account, which is really your wallet, right? And you'll be able to manage that whole investment, you'll be able to set a schedule for that investment. Ideally, the uh, ratio that we have here for investors to get their return on investment back really quickly is one day you compound, one day you claim. And the next day you do the same thing, the same cycle, one day compound, one day claim. So you're able to get a, a quick ROI. The NFTs are an additional part of the investment, and that's being a partner in the ARC ecosystem, the whole platform, one and a half percent of taxes are put into a pool and divided 
depending on which of the NFTs you purchase, whether it's the silver, gold, or platinum. You're also a member of the DAO, which you have wow. voting into the whole protocol. And you also can participate in the external investments uh, that the project is going to be doing in the future. That will also enable you to have levels of rewards so that if you get referrals, you bring you know other investors in, you'll be paid the 5% deposit uh, from their initial deposit and every other deposit that they bring to, to the project as well as rewards that are going to stack up from compounding up to 15 levels. So you have to unlock those with the NFTs. And then the other product here is the um, bond LP and the bond LP, you know, we call it like a savings account, but when you have at least $250, that's your first level. So you can get your first direct deposit from anyone using your account and your referral that will give you an opportunity to participate in the spark rewards, as well as any of the NFTs, even the silver, the first level will give you the spark rewards. I, I hope that didn't confuse you too much with all that. Oh no. Okay. That, that's pretty good. So um, it's, it's like level. So if I just wanted to participate in the vault, I would just uh, flat out buy the tokens on the DAP. And then I guess um, uh, comp down from there, I would put them into the vault and then I would compound or claim, Daily now, I know the NFTs help you reach like I guess a, a higher percentage. Um, that's the part that I'm kind of confused about. Am I still getting two percent per day without the NFT, or I actually need the NFT to get two percent per day? That part, that's the part that I'm kind of confused about. The NFTs um, are giving you a a higher uh, compound to claim ratio. And uh, there's the different levels. We can have the uh, admins actually go ahead and do the commands. You can see them here. So they, they give you uh, more options as far as to the strategy. You can go further than just doing the the one-to-one. -one. And uh, to, to just be uh, clear, when, like I said before, when you purchase to our DApp, the ArcFi token, you don't receive them in your wallet. They will be automatically deposited for you. Into the app, you're going to have to go ahead and put them into into the um, into the vault. So that'll that'll be your first action, but they, they will not be in your wallet. Just to to be clear. Oh, okay. So when you connect your wallet to the DAP, it's just it's it stays on the DAP, and it's just like you're kind of like unlocking the door to like look in. So. I'm really not taking the tokens on, into my wallet. They actually stay there. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Correct, sir. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And, and, and the reason Thanks. we did that, Nigel, uh, we did that with the private and pre-sale, and, and now you're, you're here after the launch. I'm sure you've seen so many times where people launch a project, and that little 1% of people that, that know the dev and have friends and groups, they, they always get in the whitelist, and you know after they see a couple Xs, they always dump on the whole community. Yep. Uh, time and time again. <laughs> so we don't have that here. We don't, we don't, we don't play that. We don't play that game. So the way to really level the playing field is that any investor where you came in before launch or after launch, we're all playing the same game and we are all investing very long term for a high yield return without having to look over our backs, be worried, staring at a chart, you know, who's the first whale that's going to drop the first, you know, hammer on us. So, um, everybody here is, is, is on their, you know, playing their own game on the same, you know, schedule. And, um, you know, there's a couple of videos. I don't know if you've seen SK Crypto K's video uh, about ARK, and he goes into some, some great details. Have you seen that yeah, video I'll, yet, Nigel? I was watching it. Okay. Yeah, a lot of great information there. There it is. All right. Yeah, I was watching a few videos, but it's um, I, I guess when I heard about the um, I think you guys do these daily um, podcasts. I think it's podcasts is a cast. So, yes, sir. I was just told to to get on and just ask my questions there because. Yeah, um, that's you what guys you do. Pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty clear. Yeah. So. <laughs> OK, so I kind of understand it better now. Uh, what I was. um. So the NFT just allows me to compound further. But if I don't have the NFT, um, 
it's a one to one, one compound, one claim, one compound, one claim type of thing. Is that that uh, that's that, how that it is, works? That is correct. So you stay okay, at a possible gotcha. at, at a positive because we do have a value here of NDB and CWR, and you right. want to stay in that frame because you you shouldn't hyper compound and you shouldn't hyper claim. Um, the rules have been set so that everybody here is 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 really you know stable and safe from from anyone that that wants to uh, do a strategy that's going to drain the liquidity from all the other investors who are here patiently you know going at a fantastic rate getting you know their steady uh, return on investment. So you know the 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 NFTs do give you uh, those those opportunities. They obviously are an expense. Uh, just like the bond LP. Uh, so you can start with a small NFT, the silver one, which is a thousand, or you could start, like I said, with your direct uh, first first level through the bond LP, and that's 250 uh, BUSD worth of the bond LP, which either with either of those, um, you'll be able to get referrals. But if you just want to play solo um, you, and you're not going to get referrals, you don't need those products. You can just you know, follow that unless you have an interest in going into uh, a different compounding uh, ratio strategy. Yeah, that's what I was interested about. Like, if I if I didn't plan on building a team, what other strategies? But I am interested in compounding more than uh, the one in one strategy. I want to comp. I want to do a six to one, maybe like a four to three strategy. What would I need to accomplish that? Brett, you want to uh, help him out here? Tell him a bit which for the six one or the four three. Sure. Yeah, for the four three, you could actually do that without the NFT. You can go up to a one point five compound withdrawal ratio, um, which is which is fine with the four to three strategy. Um, what we have here is a little bit different. Um, there may have been a chart that was dropped. Let me check real quick in the the group there. Uh, no, not that one. The um, So there's a compound withdrawal strategy chart, and it shows uh, the different compounding schedules based on the CWR value. And so you can actually do with our system, we have a percentage that you can allocate. And so let's say that you have um, available rewards in your ARC vault and you want to allocate those to either compounding or withdrawing. You can actually use our little slider on the DAP to adjust to a percentage. So a 1.5, for example, is, is the max without a legacy NFT. And that is a 60% compound and a 40% withdraw every day. So if you didn't want to do... Uh, you know, wait one day and do a compound and then wait another day and do a withdraw. And then, you know, follow like a, a more traditional kind of compound withdraw um, strategy from some of the other protocols you might be familiar with. You can actually wow, do a okay. percentage with our system. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about when you show up to do your allocation every day. You can kind of sit back and relax a little bit. And if you show up before the timer runs out, you can go ahead and do that 60 40 every day um and uh if you want to let the the timer go to zero that's fine too you know to get the full day in uh, but if you're doing the percent allocation it's a little bit easier to manage okay great that okay and there's the chart that's, there that's decent I, I get it i get it now so okay that's yeah. decent so i don't have to okay so i can do it daily and i'm still claiming a percentage and compounding a percentage okay cool all right. Yep. Uh, thanks. Yeah. And Thank if you, you. want to go, if you, if you wanted to go to the six to one, um, you would need the gold NFT to go to that level. Um, but if you just wanted to follow like a four three, you could still fall. You know, you could still do that without the legacy NFT. Uh, the silver NFT gives you a little bit higher, and then the gold is another leg up, and then the platinum is the highest level, and that one's thirteen. It allows a thirteen to one schedule with the platinum NFT. Gotcha. Thanks. Thank you guys. Really cleared that up. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Anytime. Great questions. And uh, folks, uh, we, well, uh, they were talking. Uh, we actually went ahead and did the spark drawing as we have a 20 minute um, timer. Once I start the transaction to get the second 
hard wallet to um, do the transaction. So I don't want it to, to fail. So we've gone ahead here and done it. The wallet is ending in F69. Congratulations to that winner. Thank you very much, Atlas. I sure appreciate that, man. That is very, very nice to know, man. That is, that is you my what? wallet address this evening, man. I sure did, brother. I sure did. <laughs> no. Congratulations. Man, I was really? feeling kind of, yeah, man, I, I'm glad. That's good. I, I, actually, I'm just sitting here. I've eaten dinner, and my buddy Jason texted me and said, hey, man, I think you won in that year wallet address. And I, I looked, and I said, I don't think they've done it yet. I looked, and man, sure enough. So that's great. Man. That's 100 and what, 25? That is um, a... 876.93 street value of that Florida realtor. I love it. I love it. Man, this is the best day of my life. Congratulations, man. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> that, fellas. Man, that's Damn. Good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. You know, we were all Ooh. hoping that was us, but we're glad it's you, man. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it, man. I certainly do. I certainly do. Well, we'll appreciate it for sure. So, uh, well, this is this is great, man. This this is the uh, best thing, man. I tell you what, unbelievable. I mean, this is something. Even, even though you don't win, it's still exciting, you know. To I mean, the last couple of nights, it's just been exciting because the pot's growing bigger and bigger. It's getting more. I mean, this is just. I mean, this is what eight over eight hundred dollars. Uh, uh, Coach Brad had said. I mean, this is huge. I mean, it's just a big deal, man. I mean, it really is. So. Uh, I mean, I appreciate y'all. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is this is great. Really, a good night. Sure is. Yeah, hell, I I got excited when I saw it, Shan. I, I was like, oh man, I, I know that's your wallet address. <laughs> well, man, that's awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Hell yeah. Well, good. I had to just break in there real Florida. quick. Yeah. Well, I Do had to break I still in there. need to post this? Uh, as we know, it's Florida. Yes. So I still post it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We absolutely Florida, want to you- get it out there. You know, people let people know that it keeps growing and well Florida. earned, well deserved. Indeed, uh, just a slight correction. Uh, I believe that the pot the street value is a little over 700. Um, if I'm doing the math right, but you still have won the largest pot to date. So, congratulations! Uh, thanks, Carlos. I appreciate it. Anything and the first live winner is good. You are the first live winner on the podcast, and that, oh, my nice. friend, in itself is huge. Nice, Ooh, nice, man. nice. So, this is podcast number what 50? Uh, what seven podcast is this? 57. 57. Yeah, you know, have to, I'll have um, that's gonna be my uh, my lucky number podcast number 557. <laughs> Five seven now. I'm gonna start using that number for things. So, <laughs> Heck yeah, oh yeah. Well, that's thank great. You for man. The, uh, thank you for the correction, Catalyst. I did. Um, I did uh, 154. That was a, a mistap on the calculator. Thanks for the correction. No worries. Still a hell of a bag. <laughs> so that's oh, man. Seven hundred and. That means dinner's on you, right? Seven hundred and six dollars and yeah, yeah man, that's 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 right. It is, yeah. I mean, plus we got to celebrate your birthday from the other day. So, uh, oh yeah, this will be a big double celebration, man. Heck yeah! <laughs> Couldn't have happened to a nicer chap. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, man. He's 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 been uh, a, a pillar of this community, man, and. Just like you, T Dripped and Catalyst, and so many of you guys out here, um, man, it just puts a big smile on my face to to see you guys win and and hear live on the podcast, which uh, we've envisioned it's going to happen at some point. Just like we're going to have somebody at some point that's going to come and say, "Man, that money came exactly when I needed it. It took my investment here at Arc to a whole nother level," and I can't wait for those testimonials to come. But uh, this is a, a milestone achieved, and uh, we can't think of anybody better. Uh, to be a spark reward winner than somebody that's been here uh, with this team and pushing on through, explaining to folks and all of the other groups what's so special about ARC, what is different, and why we are all here to get this crypto. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. 
And uh, I, don't, I don't know if you noticed, but yesterday we were talking about, hey, I haven't won yet. And, you know, like we we were purposely saying yet a couple of us that were here. So um, I think that's important to have the right vocabulary because you never really know when it's going to be your your day to win Spark over here at Dark. Hey, so, yeah. um, hey, have you go ahead, released, sir. Have you released how many entrants there are in a day? I know I've seen some people asking, and I, I, I'm just curious if you've released that. No, no, we have not. That's something that we would need to uh, pull pull up with the uh, backend devs, uh, according to the accounts. What, what the system does, it checks the accounts that have the the, the first level of bond, or the uh, really any NFT qualifies. So it runs them through the system. And uh, then it then it comes up with the the, the random uh, addresses. So very very seamless. But yeah, I can get you guys that information. I mean, it's kind of late over here. Uh, most of our guys are in Europe. But uh, if you want to know tomorrow, I can put that on my list of of things to to do tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, new winner posted cool. uh, the announcement posted, and uh, there's uh, also the prize value. Perfect. Well done, sir. Well done. But yeah, it'd be interesting to know from the 2,221 wallets, how many qualify? All right. Noted. Does anyone have a question or a comment? Alice, the, the odds are better than one in 523. They're better than that because that's a worst case number. Okay. <laughs> are you are you good with, with, uh, with those analytics of uh, chances? No, it's because uh, you take the number of NFT holders – then you take the value of the bond. You know you need $250 a bond. So you have a max number of potential bond holders because, you know, some people hold more, more than that. So that's a high-end number. But you know that there's really less bond holders than that. So, so if you add the worst case number of high-end bond holders that hold 250 add that to NFT holders, you get 523 max number of eligible wallets. Okay. Those are the best okay. odds you can possibly have for a lottery, in my opinion. <laughs> That's really good. I mean, we we, well, we we see the folks winning here. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's what makes it attractive for people to get that first level bond in at least because those are good odds. And I'm looking at my BUSD earning every day. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you, can get even more, it's, you can get it's, even it's, more crazy because if you do uh, 500, whatever, one in 500, and then you run, and then obviously it'll go down every day as you get more bondholders and more NFT holders, but you have those odds, run it by 365. So you're probably doing some sort of factorial. So your odds of winning a prize in one year are dramatically impressive. Absolutely. And, and we believe that uh, holding Bana, I think it's about 100% um, percent APY. Is that correct, uh, Brett? Uh, yeah, some of the early stats was over that uh, when I was looking at it, and especially if you're compounding your rewards back in. So then you're growing your, you know, your bond pool. So, yeah, yeah it could be 100 or more, um, you know, as long as our, our price range stays in this range and you know, with the with the LP pool attached to BUSD, we don't see a lot of movement in the bond price. You know, if we move five or six percent, like too much. I don't know uh, if people recently bought bond. Uh, it might be interesting to see if some of them are getting closer to that. You know, two hundred and fifty edge. But I, my guess is no. Um, even with a you know a little price correction of the you know three four percent we've seen over the last couple of days. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the returns. And uh, the opportunity to win the spark, you get your direct referral level if you're at that 250 bond. So, yeah, there's a lot of incentives to get those on as many wallets as possible. 
Absolutely. And we're seeing folks, uh, you know, really buy into it. You know, we're seeing uh, in the past couple of days, a lot of growth uh, happening over with the Bond LP. You know, and I mean, you could literally purchase it, you know, uh, you know, a, a minute or so probably before, you know, we go ahead and, and, and do the uh, the drawing and qualify. So it's it, it's pretty much at any time that you come in here, you're, you're going to get listed and you're going to have an opportunity uh, to get in. And as the system grows, you know, it's no secret that the Spark rewards are, are going to continue to grow. And we aspire to get to a level where we start doing, you know, two winners and three winners. You know, we already have that set up here in the system at a, you know, just a push of a button for me here on my end. And it'll distribute exactly, you know, the pot uh, divided uh, into everybody's account with a push of a button. It's pretty easy. We want it to, to be very seamless. So. While I'm here on the podcast, I don't have to be doing calculating math and let's let's fit this one and let's do the next one. So very seamless and looking forward uh, to that. And when we get to that level, I think it's also going to give better odds. Right, Jimmy? I mean, we're having two winners and three winners a night. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. <clears throat> You know, we're letting it, it grow, but but that probably will be, you know, a, an option or a candidate for a DAO vote. You know, letting the community, letting the uh, DAO, um, you know, participants, um, you know, take a vote as to, you know, at what point do we start bl- splitting it up to two or, or three? You know, we want to be really interactive with you guys and get that feedback and uh, let you guys make these decisions, which are affecting, you know, the whole project and everyone. So, um, yeah, we've got a couple of ideas of, of which should be our our first DAO vote. Very excited of, of, of testing that part out of the legacy contract. So, um, you know, that's that's definitely one on the list. And we're, we're seeing it grow steady. Uh, and so far, I, I think it's a substantial win. And that's what we really want Spark to be. Not that you're getting a couple of dollars and that's it. You know, we want it to be something that could really make a difference to any investor, whether you're a small investor or a whale. Um, a substantial prize. If you win it, if, if, if today's your lucky day, um, you're you're really going to feel <laughs> you're going to feel really happy, and you're going to see how that just takes your you know investment to to a whole another level. The so the whole idea of the concept here is that. So. Yeah, for, for right now, we think it's 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 really good. Uh, let it continue uh, to to grow the way it is. We have a lot of expansion, a lot of growth ahead of us, and um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a wild ride, guys. <laughs> nice journey ahead of us here. Yeah, let's uh, Florida point, man. Point out that we've yeah, also. Guys. Go ahead. Uh, we've also sold a couple more silver NFTs today. Uh, NFTs have been hel- they've been holding constant for the last three days. Uh, in other words, not, no NFTs have been minted, but uh, looks like that's coming alive again today. Two more silver tiers were sold or minted. Fantastic. Yeah, we, we definitely saw it you know, on the chart. People definitely were with the families and you know, the buy pressure. Um, you know, that we had uh, the last couple of days um, decreased, uh, understandably. You know, this time of the year is, is, a, is, is really a family time. Um, so, you know, folks are, are expected. Uh, we understood that, and that's okay. But we also understand that, you know, folks are going to come back in and they're going to uh, start hearing about ARC. Our, our community also is, is going to become more active in our materials, the videos that we're putting together the mobile app, there's so much coming to us. There's so much ahead of us that, um, you know, we're, I think we're in a great position. We have plenty of cash sitting in the uh, intelligent liquidity controller. So uh, we're putting it to work, holding this level and uh, quite happy with the, with the way it's going. Um, may I chime in? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, how do you? Yeah, you got a lot of sell pressure. The the chart the last few days is a little concerning. Um, 
Oh, sorry. There's a train. Sorry, train in the background. <laughs> um, yeah. So how do you battle that cell pressure? You know, um, without a whole lot of new liquidity. You know, new liquidity coming in. Um, are you dependent well, on new liquidity? And I don't. I don't want to see. You know, that you have the Furio. Um, what's been going on with Furio over the last few months? And I notice you have, um, you know, like a, uh, I, believe, I forget uh, the the doctor's name. Um, kind of the similar tokenomics uh, involved uh, that worked with Furio. So I mean, I'm just. What, what, I know this is an open-ended question. Um, what what have? How do you stop a, you know, the bottom, so to speak, or massive sell pressure based on whatever the reason may be? Um, just what are some thoughts like uh, on that? Just the chart itself. Well, it's it, today, it's already it well. It's it's all calculated, and 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 the, the way the system works on the way up, it's making money, right? Uh, so so you 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 amass these cash reserves uh, to hold right your levels, and you know we're not pegged. We're letting it be dynamic. Um, you know, we're, we don't want the price to become very volatile and to shoot up, uh, extreme or, you know, go down extremely. So that's what you're seeing there, a, a natural reaction. But on, on the way up, you have the cash reserves, you know, we're selling, you know, arc at higher rates. And now as it's going down and it's, it's getting to, to one of our, our, our ranges, we're buying back that arc and, and, and giving that support is we're understanding that folks here are not encouraged to hyper compound, right? We have a different strategy. We want our investors to get a fast return on investment. So that's all called calculated in. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's happening here right before our eyes. Um, we would have had a price uh, last time we did the estimate. I think it was around $15 per arc token, which is, you know, massive you know, massive way going up and, and we would have only had taxes if we didn't have the intelligent liquidity controller balancing and holding everything where it is. So it's, uh, you know, in our opinion, doing exactly its job and everyone's getting their payouts. There's plenty of reserves and, uh, the, you know, the system overall is, is quite different than the, the project that, that you mentioned. We're not having also any, wallets with with massive amounts of tokens that folks that you know entered uh pre-launch or or post-launch are sitting there able to dump on us and, and add a really really you know brutal sort of um you know pressure uh to our intelligent liquidity controller so you know from from where we're standing we're seeing this playing out absolutely perfectly and uh, understanding that, you know, Christmas Day and, you know, the holidays, there's there's low, you know, buy pressure. But we we had a very, very nice run up. The system accumulated uh, extremely, extremely well. So uh, we're very calm, cool and collected. I hope that answers your question. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, um, one... I have an echo. One more. By the way, congrats to FL Realtor for winning. Congrats, bro. Um also, I was, I was wondering if you guys could join my Telegram group uh, to do a short AMA with some of my investors. Um, they are interested. I told them to hold off uh, until um, you guys uh, maybe could take some time and uh, talk to my people. Uh, they, it's a paid private group um, if you want to. Okay. I sent a couple oh, um, love to. messages. And I'm not going to keep stalking. I'm not going to keep stalking you. Um, no, no. Hey, listen, that's <laughs> what we're here to do. And we love talking about our Man, I mean, we were in Korea the other night, like at five, six in the morning with you to man. Uh, we love, you know, talking to investors. And if you've got a great group over there, you know, if they're if they're around, they're engaged, you know, during these, you know, holiday times and you can get a nice little group over there. We don't care if there's five or eight or ten. If they're real investors that are looking for, you know, real passive income, sustainable long term and. And they understand some of the other dabs and we can come in and explain what's different here, what's special, what we're doing. Um, you know, that's that's really a, a project that that's taken shape in, you know, a long time. It's been since February. You know, we just yeah, launched I mean, uh, would, nine days ago. Yeah, they are interested. That would be great. And it's a it, it's a paid group. So they are serious investors. And um I feel like I'm uh, and some of them are new, but they're set up. They're in a lot of the other popular projects. 
Um, they yes, do sir. want the passive. They don't want volatility. And yep. um, I feel like I'm creating a bunch of DGENs. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, but, hey, uh, the way that's just DeFi, because, you know, 8% a day, I'm like, relax. Let's just focus on some, <laughs> some uh, you know, real projects. But if you could come and, um, and just talk to them, they are serious. And uh, it's a newer crowd. And uh, yeah, that would be great. Um, I told him to hold off, so, you know, so until you guys send me a DM. No, no, there, there, there is no days off here, man. This is our 57th, you know, podcast, and uh, we um, have a couple of MAs that we're working on. Uh, we, we, we haven't pulled the trigger in some of them. They're, they're, they're members. You know, we're hearing back. Um, a lot of them are not around, so we want to get the most bang for our buck and, and get the most, you know, eyes and ears, uh, really, you know, in front of us. But you know, we're send you a if they're if they're ready, all, we're ready. I, I already sent you one. Forgive me for being rude. I don't I, see I don't one. To, uh, no, right. Okay, I'll I'll, no, I'll DM fine. you again. Yeah, thank you. Wait, Appreciate I just checked in. I don't have any one from you, but yeah, if you write me, I'll be more than happy to uh, to to go ahead and, and get in contact with you, and and we'll set something up, man. Would love to come on over and and have a great conversation. Thank you. Awesome. And, and my one are you concern, are you invested already? Are you invested I'm, already? I'm holding. I'm okay. holding off. And okay, there's a reason because I wanted the AMA, and I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm in like a, every other project that exists. Um, one concern I have is with these uh, LMS bots. Other people call them LMS, and I've seen them kind of not work based on, you know, you have some projects that are made to make. Take, like you said, buy and sell, take profits. And, but when you have almost like a run and people get panicky, whatever could happen. I mean, I know those LMS bots are not really built for it. And I'm not trying to FUD. I'm just asking a real question because um, I hate putting in thousands of dollars and then watch it get cut in half in value. Um, and I know you kind of already answered that. Um, yeah. Just well, throw that I'll, out I'll help you out here. We, we, we have a saying here. This, this is not your grandmother's LMS. <laughs> this is a, a completely new algorithmically based intelligent liquidity controller that's not pegged. What you've seen are pegs. And uh, a lot of it comes to with uh, the psychology of folks when they see a price is pegged on you know the grandmother's LMS. And uh, it really activates when it goes below that to make that purchase. We've seen people panic, like you just said, and then do a bank run. See, and, and, you know, I think a lot of that is just not really explaining it correctly. And, you know, our philosophy is very different where we're not pegging exactly to a level where we're dynamic. We're, we're letting it be more organic, but we're, we're definitely putting the brakes on in a, in a way that you don't see that flat line. And folks are sitting here relaxed, understanding that it's going up very, 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 very slowly. And it's going down very, very, very slowly. Which you know, if you haven't bought in, you're you're seeing here an opportunity, as I say, to buy the dip. But you know, if you if you zoom out, right, <laughs> a lot of it is zooming out when 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 you take things into consideration. Let me see if I can show you something. Uh, let me pull up the chart for you real quick. Okay. So, are you are you able to see my? Are you able to see my um my screen? Mystic? Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. I see. Okay. It. Look, the last time uh, we were at 12, but we actually did a number and it was even way higher, but I'm going to leave it there for now. If, uh, if we're calculating the buy pressure and the amount of volume that we did here, which is quite substantial, um, we would have been really coming from down here all the way up here. And I know we would have broken past uh, closer to the 1550, 1550 level on price. And if you zoom out and you look at this, what, what do you see the price is doing? It's not pegged. It's not flat. But it's maintaining that range and taking all this equity that, that, that really would have gone there. And it's, it was really instrumental and key to have it here at the beginning. Uh, some projects have implemented something like this later and, and had some really crazy volatility. Uh, Brett, do you, do you want to add a bit to this conversation? Because it, it is important, and, and we want folks to understand what's different. Yeah, I've kind of explained it a little bit, like um, uh, what we've seen over the last few days, I would say, you know, we've seen a correction of about 5 or 6%. Uh, we talked a little bit about pressure relief relief valves. 
uh, built into the algorithm. It's probably one of the best uh, illustrations of what it's doing. So when we see the the buys versus sells, you know, really pour on, it protects itself. Essentially, it's protecting the BUSD that it that it accumulated on the way up, and it's not just going to pay those out until it can't anymore. Um, so that's where this dynamic system really is, you know, it has these safety features built into it. You know, is it a silver bullet and is going to work forever? You know, obviously, no, that's it's one component of many uh, for sustainability. The biggest thing is just the mechanics of the system. Um, because we're not encouraging the hyper compounding all the way to max wallet and then everybody draining out at the end and then you see the big, you know, the big cascade downward. Um, we think what we can do is create like a long, very long sine wave in the price chart that looks more organic, but then also accumulates that BUSD and then has enough to, um, you know, kind of stave off uh, natural, uh, you know, natural cell uh, volume that comes in. But there are that pressure release uh, valves that I've talked about where we're not just going to cash out all that BUSD. We're going to let it uh, dynamically correct itself to a certain level. Um, and then it's going to, you know, start to support a floor as that sell volume uh, decreases and we start to see buys return back into the chart, which is what we're seeing now. And what we saw over the holiday was pretty much nobody uh, doing any buying and, uh, you know, it was, it was sell, 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 sell. So the system will adjust to that behavior to protect itself basically and protect the BUSD that we have stored, um, in the liquidity controller. So, you know, as long as we see some, um, balanced activity in the buys and the sells, then things are going to look fairly stable. Like what we're seeing now, we're sort of seeing a floor form. Um, but then if we do see buy, 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 we saw that on the way up. Um, it, it was a nice steady progression up. And then we saw the sell, 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 and, you know, no buys coming in. Then we saw a gradual, you know, decrease back down. And now we're returning to more of a balanced system. Thank you for that, Brett. I hope that that helps uh, you some. Mystic. Absolutely. Thank you. I have to ask, you know, I just have to ask that, you know, well, we've, you know, we, I know we've all, okay. I, there's a lot of PTSD as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah. Happen, you know, before I start, of waving course, the flag, you know, but I appreciate the answer. Thank you. Yeah. We'd love to come over. Um, send me that DM and uh, we'll set something up, come talk to you and, and, and your investors and, have a great conversation and see if you have that aha moment once we really break it down and go through the whole system. Uh, we've seen time and time again, folks, you know, really just, just take the time to hear and ask the questions. And there's many questions, uh, especially in today's market. But this system's really been built for the bear and understanding that uh, a lot of the a lot a lot of the parameters of past systems, you know, we've had the the great fortune uh, mystic of being able to to do what's called that that hindsight is twenty twenty. I'm sure you've heard that before. We've been able to see what's happened and where where the uh, mistakes have been, and uh, really fine tune and, and re-engineer the whole system. But it's looking at the whole thing from a macro level and and how everything comes together, and what makes that difference, and how that translates into sustainability on a long term basis. So. Um, yeah, man. Looking forward to that opportunity, and thank you for the invitation. Yep, I just sent you a DM just to get it going. Yes, thank sir. You. Thank you. Let's get to this crypto. All right. There we go. Any other questions? Uh I have Atlas. I have sent you a DM. Could you check, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Uh, another update. Down? 
<laughs> Did what? I bring the vibe down? Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just fact that I didn't read the DM. Another uh, update that we have is that we paid out today all of the contest winners for the YouTube videos that were done about ARC from, from our community as well as the Medium articles. That uh, uh, S23, did you put that um, that banner out today? Ready to post your command, sir. Let's do it. On it. Thank you, sir. So a lot of happy winners. Top prizes were six hundred dollars. Then second prize four hundred, two hundred, and then we had seven winners on each side that won a hundred BUSD each. So, and really, uh, <laughs> really nice uh, to be able to to participate because you know these folks are doing videos that are that are you know talking about ARC, educating, explaining to folks you know how how we you know do business here, what's special about our system, as well as you know showing their referral, growing their syndicate, you know their teams, and and that's something that. You'll be able to see through time, maybe a month or two or three down the line. I mean, I don't know if SK was was uh, still here, but he was here before. I mean, he's been able to grow so much through through uh, YouTube platforms and you know, Catalyst, you know, Cryptozoa. I mean, nobody does it better than these guys with the Medium articles. You know, the growth is there for folks to to really, you know, step out of the comfort zone and and do something different. We've had so many folks that had never written an article. Uh, sit down and get excited and take the time and motivate themselves and through their process of writing a medium article motivate so many other folks in our community that uh, it was it was really a great thing to see oh we got mr. green in the house how are you sir welcome to the podcast hello hello how are you doing um, very good I sir have one thing that I just saw that makes me personally very happy should I share Sure, go ahead. The winner of tonight's spark has an absolutely based address. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> Look at the address. Okay, hold on. Let me go back to it. Actually, nobody else see that? Yeah, 69 FF69. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good friend, Florida Realtor. He, uh, he's here with us tonight. It was the first time we have somebody live on the podcast that won. And right away, and I mean, he, he knew about it. A shit ton of money. Hey, Mr. Yes, Green. Sir. Congratulations. Yes. Appreciate it, my friend. <laughs> you guys Appreciate are friends. It. You guys know yeah, each other. <laughs> of course. You do some yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green, yeah, I'm glad you were able to come on tonight, man, and, and celebrate with me. That's awesome. This is uh, this is a yeah. big deal. I mean, it's a really big deal for anybody. I don't care how big of a uh, vault balance you get. I mean, any one arc is is a blessing, but you know, 125 is is uh, is is huge, is man. This is a it's a big deal. This will certainly get you fired up for sure, man. If you're not already fired up, you're gonna be fired up now for sure, definitely. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Florida Realtor, it makes me, like, I'm very sorry that I did not find the time to, mm, like, invite you in while I was uh, writing the DAO version of our legacy, because that contract is, uh, like, it's not super fancy or whatever. It's just some pieces of it uh, are just amazing and uh, could have been great. But, well, if you have time, I can, uh, like, guide you through it a bit, because there is lots of uh, interesting things for you as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd like that. Like I had said, at any time that you've got time or any time that you are doing something, uh, you know, I'd certainly love to look over your shoulder and, uh, you know, appreciate your time learning for sure, my friend. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if anyone else uh, would like to join that as well, so um, I, currently it's just Florida Realtor, but um, if anyone is interested in Solidity and learning a bit about it or just, you know, looking how I do how I do things, I do, whenever I get bored while coding, I do like to invite people to, well, just um, keep me company while I write the code. So, Green, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick you up on that one. I'll join you for that. 
Yeah. All right, shoot me a DM over. I'm gonna invite you to the to the tiny group. Well, it's not really group. It's like <laughs> me and Florida Realtor in there right now. But yeah, I'll gladly invite you in there. Tag me and also I send you a DM. Yep, do that. So, yeah, I mean, what else? What else is new? Yeah, I would actually oh, be my being on that, uh, on that, you know, that TG, uh, Mr. Green. Yeah, all right, just just shoot me the ammo when you like, and then I'll find the chat again and I'll invite you in. We'll call it the Arc Solidity Sessions. <laughs> all right, and that just makes it official. You remember Florida when we talked about it last time when I wasn't sure whether this should be an official Arc thing, but uh, yeah, now it is. I'm gonna rename yeah. the group even. Can you yeah. get Gordy yeah. to make me a nice, a nice, um, like, a group picture? Atlas. Sorry. There was Go a ahead. picture that you guys are working on before, and the top ceiling picture, black and white. That was good. Oh, the coding yeah. picture. Oh yeah, that is amazing. I love it. I was Atlas's wife that did that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll take that. Good times. Yeah, that was amazing. I want to come back, man. It's so fucking cold here. <laughs> but yeah. So, all right, let me just, uh, probably my DMs are full now, right? Oh, not yet. <laughs> hey, I, I think I'm still on Telegram jail, so I'll... I'll uh, and Donatello send test. There you go. Yeah, I hate Telegram jail. It's so annoying. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll send. I'll send. I'll, I'll uh, message. Um. I'll message Atlas and Atlas can get with you. No, I you. just sent you a DM over so you can. Oh, oh you did? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, been, I've been on Telegram jail for probably about almost two months now. So. Yeah, it sucks so bad. And you can't do anything about it. It's so annoying. Mr. Green, today I actually uh, created a NFT. Uh, with, um, I used, um, usually I've been using Solidity, but I used, uh, Python, uh, to, um, uh, PyChain to go in and then we use DigitalOcean site to use the host and, uh, and created an NFT and was able to deploy it. Um, it was pretty interesting. I mean, it was really, uh, the process, you know, you, you know, all these things that y'all did, like you create all these NFTs for the pre-sale and private sales and, you know, I mean, it, it looks nice and flashy, but to actually go through them, the the, um, the steps and to see what the back end, I mean, it, it's just crazy, crazy complex. Just the simple little things that you do um, just to, you know, just to create the image and then to then have the image um, created with a um, with HTTP, HTTP address. And then do, yeah, it, that, it's just is... it's really complex. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Bit. I got to tell you the like the, the NFT generation itself is was not being done by me. That was Jan, Crypto Jan. Um, I basically, whenever a code is not Solidity, that was someone else. That's the rule you can you can look at. Basically, I only write Solidity, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, Atlas, you had this amazing name for the group, and I forgot about it. Arc coding, Arc. Arc Solidity Arc. session. Arc Correct. Solidities. Arc Solidity Sessions. With Mr. Green. All right. Yep. That works. And now I'm going to make that a public. Can I make it a public group? No, I still have too many groups. So is that, the, more. is that the ass group then? The ass group? <laughs> yes, it is. Well, might, might want to throw something else in there. I don't know. That's a good one. 
Hey, I got, I got something, a fact that I want to share with you guys today that I think is really, really important and a great milestone here for ARC and the community. We today have given $4,500 away, $1,900 for the YouTube contest, $1,900 for the Medium article contest, and $700 and six BUSD for the Spark rewards. That's massive. And there's, I think, no better way to, you know, really, you know, spend these funds than to invest into your community, invest into your leaders, invest in the folks that are really taking the time to get involved, to do their due diligence and help others, you know, have empathy and, and answer the questions and go to their groups and their friends and other investors they met throughout their, their experience here in DeFi or in the real world and have them come on board. No better marketer, no better money I think could be spent than giving these, these, these incentives, you know, back to the folks that are invested and their heart is here with us, their financial goals, their future. They've, they've made a decision to, to be here on a very long journey with a massive upside of growth and return abundance for all of us. So, um, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm quite happy and satisfied <laughs> just looking at this math today, giving away almost 4,500 back to the investors, back to the community. What, what better way uh, to, to really promote the, the project, but through really you know, lifting each other up and, and getting to crypto, as you say. So congratulations to all of the winners here. And if I could ask uh, all of the members that are here with us live, or if you're listening to the recording at a later time, if you can forward the announcement of the winners of the YouTube and the Medium articles, as well as the uh, prize for Spark tonight to your groups, uh, we'd greatly appreciate that. That's a really great way to, a really great way to get folks uh, excited to to understand that here at ARC, we, we value our community and our greatest asset is your participation and uh, you guys taking the time the way you have to get so involved and do these YouTube videos and these Medium articles. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, it's a lot of crypto to get. <laughs> Forty five hundred going right back to to where it should be. I mean, man, I've I've been around. And I've seen I've seen just people flush money down the toilet with with just ridiculous marketing concepts and ideas. Um, you know, and, and a lot of that doesn't work here, guys. You know, we don't want Kucoin ads spending thirty. I've done that. Spend thirty, forty k a day on ads. And you know, if you have experience, you understand that after three days. It's completely ineffective, and there's folks that don't know that, and they'll spend for like a week or, or two, uh, you know, ridiculous sums, just flushing, burning the money, uh, without really having the understanding. But the the whole way to really promote this project, it's it's community based, and it's it's getting into real investor groups and to the folks in the real world, and it's a completely different strategy than you know most crypto projects really do, you know, go after. And we and we've seen that we've seen how effective folks have been to to grow their syndicates through those medium articles and those those YouTube videos. I don't know if you want to add a little bit uh, of your personal experience, uh, Coach Brad, with writing your first article and, and, and getting out of that comfort zone and the results you had. Yeah, sure, of course. Um, that first medium article that I wrote is uh, is still producing results. Um, it was only two days ago I had a, a new member join. Are they in the chat? They were in the chat last night. No, they're not. Um, you know, so that's that's four new syndicate members through one uh, medium article, uh, and I've never never written a medium article, and you know was was not in my comfort zone at all and just uh, seek some advice from others that had before me and, um, you know, obviously produced 
you know a, a decent article because it's it's gained four syndicate members from it and but uh just going back to the beginning i i, I wrote it and within 24 hours someone popped into my chat and you know quickly discovered that they weren't part of my uh team members teams um and it was that medium article and then the next day and then the, uh, then there was a couple of days and then somebody else joined you know within the first week i had three new syndicate members all from from one medium article and now you know a little over a week we're, we're it's up to four so you know it's something i said before when you've asked me this question or we've been talking about it a, a medium article doesn't go away you know you don't get one shot you know you write the article and oh you you didn't you know pick up a a, 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 a team member and then, it, and then it's oh, it's gone. Like it doesn't work like that. Medium is there, and it, it, you know it's there to stay. And as Arc gets bigger, and you know the we spread the net, and we go to more AMAs, and more people hear about it, and you know then the the real world applications come out, and people are googling these things, and you know they they're doing the research themselves. If you've got a Medium article there, and you know especially if you've got a bunch of Medium articles, um people will see that, you know, you could, you could be a year down the line and still gaining referrals from, from the medium articles you wrote a year ago. And, you know, that's something that I've promoted to my team. You know, you've got get your ace who's, uh, he's now on like five or six medium articles. Um, got a couple of the other people in there that are, are writing articles. And, you know, I know that, Chris uh, Dugan wrote his first Medium article from being motivated from seeing, you know, the tangible results from mine. So, you know, that's what it's all about. It's not just, uh, you know, just not just about me or even me and my team. It's about the whole community. You know, if you can motivate somebody else to do something that can benefit themselves, that in turn benefits everybody involved. I mean, I just think that's absolutely fantastic. So definitely, you know, Give, give give it a go and uh, you know don't be afraid if you need pointers tips a bit of hand holding you know that is literally my job here at, at arc so I'm, I'm more than willing to help we can you know book an appointment and even if you haven't even started we can go over it from the beginning or if you've finished one and you you know you want it to look really professional really clean then uh, you know that that's also something i can help you with so you know don't don't be afraid to reach out just shoot me a dm if anyone's interested Thank, thank you. I was amazed to see how many folks <laughs> really got involved and got inspired uh, and motivated. And I, I think a lot of it's got to go to uh, Catalyst um, for, for really just showing us the, the quality that they're doing over there at CryptoZoa and, and his articles here. I mean, the man set off a complete firestorm of, of, of buys for the NFTs when he zeroed in on that. And then uh, he did it, too, uh, with the Spark you know, he's setting, he's setting the tone, he's setting, you know, the bar so high and through it, I am inspiring, you know, you and then you inspiring others, uh, showing that it's, it's not difficult and it actually can be fun. And, and I've had a couple of people even mention here on the podcast that it can become a bit addictive because you're, you're, you're sitting down and, and you're finding ways to, to, to really communicate. And, um, you know, it, it forces you to really understand ARC. Uh, the white paper, you know, the contracts, uh, everything that we do here, all the work that's been put into this. And that, I think, gives everybody a, an edge of knowledge, a power of understanding how to manage your investment, which translates into into being able to have a conversation with folks and, and explain it. Uh, I've never seen anyone be effective at explaining something they honestly didn't understand themselves. So there's so many benefits to it. And uh, really a, a, a humbling experience to see folks get involved the way you did. We're going to do this again uh, very shortly. Uh, we think it's, it's the best investment uh, that we could do uh, for our community, for our growth. Um, we're probably going to do a TikTok uh, one for, for the next round as well and, and, and you know, shoot our shot and see how that works. And um, you know, be creative and, and try things to, to really impulse and get the message out there and, you know, it's it's that kind of thing that just keeps on, you know, letting folks grow uh, through 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 having themselves out in a social media, something that we identified here with Brad a long time ago. 
um, that, you know, there's only so many folks, you know, neighbors, friends, coworkers, people you went to high school with that, that you could tap into, which is important. I mean, that's, that's your first directs right there, but expanding into, you know, the interweb and the social medias and putting yourself out there, it, it's, it's really limitless, the amount of growth that you could have. But if you don't take a chance, if you, if you don't get out of, you know, that comfort zone, you, you, you won't, you know, really have the opportunity like anything else in life. You got to put the work in. And for those that do, they, the prize is there for the taking. So great to see you, Brad, and get your ace. Uh, we also had uh, Jimmy Cash write amazing, amazing article. Uh, what these guys have done is, is something really, really impressive. And, and the level of professionalism, uh, the detail, the way just, they've just been able to break it down and communicate. Uh, Catalyst, I mean, were, were you impressed with, with some of the, uh, those articles coming out of the, the, the community here, first-time writers? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, was, it was awesome hearing uh, their, you know, their take on it, especially the first-time writers, like uh, Get Your Ace, as you've already mentioned. And, uh, and not only did he find it enjoyable, but, you know, he picked his, he picked his audience and he, he, you know, he had his own voice, but uh, I believe, I haven't looked at the announcement, but I believe he won the first prize. Didn't he have the most, uh, didn't he get the most uh, claps on medium? I know he, he, he was at least in the top three for sure. Uh, but, no, uh, he, he wasn't catalyst, but he did win um, uh, the random prize three times because he had, um, four or five entries, each entry being a you know a new chance to win. So he, he didn't get in the top three, but he did win the equivalent of uh, three hundred BUSD for for the time and the effort that he put in. And as you said, first time writer, so that was really good to see. Well, I guess uh, not only a first time writer, now he's a second, third, fourth time writer. Obviously, he's really uh, got the caught the writing bug um and uh, yeah congratulations on your your syndicate growth from your your article too i mean that just that's the proof is in the pudding it does work um if it didn't i wouldn't still be writing articles and uh, no it's uh i encourage everyone to just take a stab at it just you know write it doesn't have to be technical at all. I've said it on this pod before. It can be simply, what is your experience with ARC? You know, what's your personal experience with ARC so far? Or how were you introduced to ARC? You know, tell your story. Um, how were you introduced to it? How have you found the uh, experience to be? Or you can write technical too. I mean, for those of you that read my articles, you know, I'm, I'm more of a data guy and I get into more of an analytic, analytical approach, but, you know, the sky's the limit when you're writing articles oh, and videos for that matter. Um, I, I actually don't do videos myself. I have a lot of respect for the guys that can put those out and uh, I know that I know that's a lot of work, but uh, whatever your medium is, whether it's writing or videos or sounds like we're going to have a chance to all learn TikTok. <laughs> unless you guys already know it i've never been on tiktok but um my wife is a tiktok fanatic so uh she, she'll probably teach me how to do it hey we got to try it you know we've seen the effect effectiveness i mean you guys of our cryptozoa have have uh done so well through that and um you know we're, we're grateful for for you getting involved and and becoming a part of this community because you've you've you set a, an example for others that they've been able to be inspired by and, and, and go take action and then see the results that it absolutely works. And I, I do not think it, there's any uh, doubt that a lot of our growth has come through those YouTube videos and those Medium articles. Absolutely uh, effective, uh, hard to gauge, but but easy to understand logically that that it did have a, a great impact and influence so uh yeah we're gonna continue well, I'm, I'm just happy to hear all those success stories great. absolutely <laughs> thank you man would it be possible uh, i think with, without you so 
um, you know, that's that's what we wanted really here with the mm-hmm. with the the private and the pre-sale. Get the, get these folks that that really have experience that can you know roll their sleeves up and get involved and help. The rest of the community to to really understand arc and and then go out there and, and be able to do these these uh communications through the youtube and and the medium articles so i mean it's 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 working out i think even even better than than my wildest uh, imagination i i didn't know it would be that fast and effective brad and get your ace and all these great guys getting you know folks I think uh, Betty uh, met met Brad through Medium as well. So folks are coming in there and they're understanding and they're investing, they're getting involved. Um, so a, a fantastic, a fantastic way to to go go out there and and have folks grow their syndicate as well as the whole project overall. So um, well, yeah, great contest, and I'm so happy to hear. It. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to hear you're going to be doing another contest. Obviously, this was, uh, as you said, more successful than you could have imagined. Just just think on round two, how many articles are going to be written and how many videos are going to be done uh, now that everyone's seen the uh, payout. And it, also, they've heard the success stories and they've seen how people have been able to grow their syndicates. Uh, there's just going to be a deluge of of articles out there it's just it's going to be amazing and you're going to be on the panel that's going to help us to 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 gauge uh you know really content and uh you know who is who is really effective and and you know stood out so uh we're we're you know making some parameters that i think are that are going to be more organic uh based and uh have have an opportunity uh really to to sit there not just let the the numbers be the metrics right uh, let's let's dig into uh, the content because there yeah there was really some amazing content out there and you know with your, your experience at Cryptozoa and, and all the thousands of articles that you've been able to see and read um, I can't think of anybody better to to give us that feedback uh, in in a fair independent manner so um, yeah <laughs> that's gonna be I fun be happy to be a part of that thank you I would love to be a part of that <laughs> thank you. Thank you, man. We're lucky to have you and uh, everyone else here. And uh, what a fulfilling, you know, night and podcast to see Florida Realtor be our lucky winner. And I'm, I'm still like, you know, smiling about that. I'll probably take, I'll probably take a couple hours. Maybe when I go to sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, great, great emotion. And uh, looking forward to seeing more of that happen. You know, maybe your your wife will win Catalyst, or you'll win Donatello. We want to see Ed. We want to see Simon. We want to see you know Z. We want to see everybody. You know, really have their their lucky day with uh, the Spark Pool. Do we do we have any questions or comments so far? Now you guys keep up the good work. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate you, brother. Happy to have you here. We got Z in the house. Z, I, 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 yeah. um, I said at the beginning of the podcast that you, you might not come through. I know you had uh, something to take care of uh, that was really important. Are you yeah. are you lurking or are you here to to? Uh, yeah. Fortunately, I've drop the. One time. Yeah, I'm, I'm back home now. Okay. So, um, Everything's under control, uh, and you guys are my family, man. So I want to give some some news, if you don't mind. Let's go, man. The floor is yours. Yeah, yeah. So so today in a bear market, we saw a uh, a, a, a a project called Pudgy Pigeons, uh, penguins. Sorry, Pudgy Penguins, sort of topple uh, Board Eight Yacht Club, um, on uh, on OpenSea. Uh, it's not happened in the last six months. Uh, but it happened today. Um, so, so there's a new uh, ranking there. Pudgy pen- uh, penguins. They have uh, merchandise, so they have a utility there. And pudgy penguins is number two right now. Little pudgy is uh, number three. So that's a new entrance to OpenSea. This was a project that uh, that that a bunch of people in crypto uh, writ off uh, about a year ago. 
And it's always these sort of projects that actually end up toppling uh, big, big uh, blue chip ones like Board Ape and other deeds, like other deed of other side, which is uh, sort of um, Board Ape's land sales, uh, what's it called? Land sales, um, basically, where we're top five for the past, uh, you can say, six months. And, and they've been toppled by by Sappy Seals, Little Pudgy, and Pudgy Penguins, which is it's, it's, it's a new... Uh, I mean, Board Ape is back to number one, but they were down by twelve hours um, as number two. So that's that was pretty interesting to see. Um, like one thing I want to kind of look into is is like the main headlines uh, that have taken up the year, you know. And then maybe we can have a, have a further discussion on this. But but these are like the because because we're coming up to like New Year's now. And we and we do a review of like all the top headlines of of what's been happening for the last you know 12 months in, in DeFi and in crypto just overall in centralized exchanges so but the first headline that sort of hits the ranks is cryptocurrencies uh prices plummeted as investors start to fret about rising interest rates so so it was about february time when um jerome powell uh, made the announcements of uh you can say interest rate hikes uh any any hiked it twice by 75 basis points and the second that happened Crypto fell from you can say it's uh, it's fifty five thousand floor on Bitcoin down to thirty five then twenty five and now sort of seventeen sixteen so so rising interest rates that's the first thing that uh, that took the year by storm I mean this was the first years that we had to see some recovery happen from COVID and it, the the opposite really happened where everything sort of plummeted. And uh, and and with these rising interest rates, um, I think we are going to have a mild recession as we get into 2023 and 2024. So that's the first headline that kind of took everyone by 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 you know off guard. It took everyone by uh, off their guards. So that's one thing. Um, but I mean, apart from that, like crypto has been everywhere. I mean, the crypto dot com uh, banner has been all over the World Cup. Uh, that just recently happened, and and that's what takes the second headline. So, uh, crypto uh, heavyweights like Coinbase, uh, Crypto.com dominated Super Bowl uh, halftime shows. So, so crypto projects uh, took the most advertisement slots on the Super Bowl, uh, which, um, which which was pretty interesting. You had people like Larry David. You had um, you know, big, 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 big names, uh, sort to of start there. Coin, uh, Coinbase did a whole QR code promotion for 60 seconds. That was pretty interesting. You had, uh, LeBron James, uh, who did the crypto.com advert, uh, for his collaboration. Uh, you had, I mean, I, I don't want to mention FTX, but FTX did Larry David. That was a funny advert. And, uh, and, and, and so did, um, its partners like Miami Heat, Mercedes F, uh, Formula One. NFL, everyone had a bit of uh, crypto, um, you can say, uh, advertisement slots on the on, on on the Super Bowl. So that's a big, big, big change in, in in the way advertisements get done. And then, 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 then number three was the stablecoin Terra USD slip into one dollar. And then we learned a lot about uh, algorithmic stablecoins. And then for the next couple of months, we had USDT, we had USDC. Um, in, in, in the limelight uh, of how they hold their prices. So, so whenever something gets depegged from stables, it gets in the news. So, so that's the, you can say, third uh, sort of headline. Uh, fourth, that, that made the, I mean, th- this is the I- ironic thing that happens in DeFi, like where someone promotes something. Um, so, so the Celsius founder, uh, he did a live AMA and, and, and on CNBC, he said, we're not going to act like a bank. And then, and then, so the headline reads, Celsius Network froze all its customers' funds after promising to never act like a bank. So this was something that uh, was ironic uh, because a bank does withhold uh, withdrawals. And, and it started to like start the sort of domino effect in, in crypto. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, it's been a balance of like good and bad news. Um, but that's what we expected in a storm, especially when, when, when you're coming off COVID, when you're getting to a place of, uh, you know, uh, um, relapse, can we say? Uh, but, but at, at a place where, where, where the storm is rising and interest rates are going up and we're trying to normalize the, 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 the 
uh, I think it was it was pretty interesting. One person said, um, like the world is dominated by 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 the worst meme coin, and we call it the the, the dollar currency. <laughs> and and the U.S. dollar has been one currency that we can learn a lot from, and 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 how uh, a limited supply can sort out issues within the dollar sort of leverage. So so that's something that made the so high interest rates on the dollar sort of defaulted a bunch of uh, you can say high risky uh, tech companies and. And and also made its way into crypto. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, like like uh, we we had a domino effect into like three arrows. So that's the fifth headline. So a hedge fund three arrows capital defaulted on a loan and was ordered into liquidation. That was the first centralized exchange to go. Then we followed it up with FTX. Um, so yeah, we have. Uh, it's been a really stormy year for a lot of people in crypto. Uh, which is why it's it's important to understand utility. That, that's the reason why we why we educate, and and we make people understand technical and fundamental. So so I'm glad at Arc we're we're sort of taking the educational standpoint. Um, our our knowledge base is growing, and um, if, uh, if 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 Johnny uh, uh, sort of Johnny sort of crypto is here, uh, uh, sorry, Jimmy Cash. I, I got to give you guys kudos because uh, because your team has done a great job on Discord organizing things. Um, so so I got to give um, and and then on top of that to have Florida Realtor as the first person to be winning on 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 live uh, podcast uh, is, is a first. So congrats to you. Um, but yeah, that kind of takes my headlines. Um, uh, that completes my headline rounds. Thank you, Atlas. Thank you, Z. I appreciate that, buddy, very much. So, I don't, and I tell you, I don't, I don't see rates going down at all. I mean, interest rates are going to be going up through 2023. I mean, inflama- uh, inflation just remains elevated. I mean, you know, the Federal Reserve is going to continue to implement their monetary policy to tame the inflation. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, it's just going to continue to rise. So, in the centralized zone. Things aren't looking too um, sunny. So, you know, it's nice to have, um, you know, places like ARC where you can go and, uh, you know, something new, something fresh to put your money in and uh, and grow with a good community like this. So, uh, you know, hearing you say all that uh, is, you know, is one thing. And then but but seeing that there's an opportunity here uh, to take advantage of is, is good. So uh, always appreciate your insight, man. I really do. Always. Yeah, no, it's it's important. I mean, like, uh, it's it's great that you know this podcast is used in such a way where we give you updates on on what's happening in Arc. We we sort of have the spark prizes, and we have, and we actually like value folks that write articles, that do marketing, that 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 do a bunch of things to grow our community, and and that's what we're all about. Um, so it's important to like see what we're doing internally, as 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 you can say a DAO. And and see our roadmap, and then and then for me to like sort of give you guys a little focus on what's really happening in the world uh, of, of of DeFi and in centralized crypto, and and what's happening with the economy. It kind of it's a breath of fresh air to to know here that that we are picked away from all that uh, pump and dump and and the charts. <laughs> so it makes us uh, it puts in a, in a good in a good place there and. And and now that sort of um, you know I've I've left Solidity Development for a little bit, so it's a it's, it's a breath of fresh air to know that Realtor you and and Green are working, and and just learning Solidity for for the sake of it, and and, and I can't wait to join you guys, and and Green if if you want we can make a small Discord uh, subcategory you know and just keep it private for people that want to learn, and and Discord can be a really good place where where we can sort of share our screens and and be able to post code. And develop apps within Discord as well, because Discord is becoming DeFi more and more. Uh, I believe uh, MetaMask will be enabled on it very soon, so um, we can play our poker, do some development uh, on Discord. Uh, but if it's on Telegram, I don't mind either. Um, so yeah, a, a bunch is going on here, and and you know we're we're ending the year. It's the twentieth of December uh, where I am. And I can't ask for a better team. Uh, this team has been, you know, through it from February, um, and 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 now we have a community 
and we are going to grow. And and when we do grow, it's folks like Atlas, it's folks like Brett and Realtor. These are going to be the sort of members that we all look up to. Um, so I'm looking forward to when we sort of really go big and we have a thousand folks on, on call. And before we go big, I hope we make the foundations and we, and we have our values and we have our, uh, our, our, our honesty and integrity as we go forward. Uh, Cause it happens where when a project and stuff gets real, um, you know, uh, gets real, um, gets a spotlight treatment that things do go blur. I mean, you, the visions get blurred a little bit, but I believe here at ARC, um, the the team we have here and, and also the contributors we have here are very genuine and and we're going to be going places. So so for everybody who enjoyed their Christmas, I hope um, the Spark Rewards and and just doing the manual, um, you can say, um, you know, buying the bonds and compounding and claiming uh, is, 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 is something insightful and something new uh, to what's happening in DeFi right now. Because uh, every other Telegram group I've been through, uh, everyone's sort of suffering a little bit. And, and, and that's why we have to have a bit of humbleness to know that the world is struggling in a little bit. And so, so we have to be, we have to feel a bit privileged that we are working on a great project like ARC. And we have uh, great folks from all sorts of industries. Just by you, Realtor, I've learned a little bit about real estate and other folks I've learned about healthcare and, 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 and many different uh, subcategories. So as we work together, uh, I hope everyone has a great uh, new year. And, and we don't have to have new year resolutions. We know what we want to do. We want our 2% on a day-to-day -day basis on our ROI DAP. <laughs> uh, so yeah, great times ahead. And, 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 and I think as we get through the next few days, I will also talk about sort of main headlines that really matter. I'll, I will look into a total value locked and, and, and I'll throw some tutorials how we can sort of follow whale wallets on Etherscan, on BSC scan, a little technical things that we can do on DeFi Llama and we become a much more informative um, audience. Um, now, the last thing I want to say before I go at this is if we can get more people to join the Discord, I see the numbers increasing, but I would love it to reach a thousand. I think we're almost uh, 2,500 members here, 2,600. Uh, so I'd love to see a thousand member Discord in the next uh, few weeks and months. And then we can really have a lot of fun where we learn, where we uh, all uh, compound together. Um, what do you think, Atlas? Oh, absolutely. I know you're you're putting together the uh, poker game for Friday. So I think that'll be a fun way to get folks involved, um, especially if they're if they're not already in our Discord or if they haven't used it before and they want to have some fun here with the team, the community. Uh, that'll that'll be a really good introduction to them to come and have some fun and, and, and see what Discord's all about and what you're establishing there for us, planting the flag uh, in front of so many amazing investors. I mean, Discord is is, is just massive, uh, much more massive even than, than Telegram uh, crypto investors. So mm -hmm. I, I think there'll be a good entry to it and, and perhaps um, – you know, doing a contest because we we can actually count how many referral uh, links uh, people use to to invite folks to the Discord server. So maybe doing a contest starts to get some traction that way. Uh, I always find that that by making it entertaining, fun, or, or that you can win, it's always a great motivation for folks to to get involved and uh, you know do something, you know, take an action. So um, yeah. that that's that's something that uh, yeah we're gonna work you know towards slowly and um, get that growth. Uh, we also want to start doing AMAs uh, with communities of investors, real DeFi, serious folks that are looking for uh, substantial returns and sustainability. And there are tons of those, um, you know, great groups. Some of them have 8, 10, 12, 15,000 people. Uh, we want to start, you know, getting some traction over there as well. Um, you know, we probably want to wait a little bit until we can get some numbers because uh, we spoke about this last night. Folks in Discord, if they go to a if they go to a server of a project that there's if there's just very little people, they think it's it's not serious. Absolutely. So um, I think we're we're more effective to to let's get our community leveraged over there, involved through contests, through to the poker and and everything that we're going to do, and then let's go attack and and let's you know dress to impress, as they say. 
the uh, community of investors over on Discord. Uh, another uh, great announcement that we have for you guys today is uh, that we are on the uh, Moonark uh, app. Uh, we've been listed in the ROI DAP and also in the in, in uh, the minor side. You can see Arc there at the top, and uh, here are the ROI DAPs and you know, our TVL is looking really nice compared to uh, other substantial uh, projects in the space. So, um, yeah, we're, we're looking pretty good. We could do like a search here to just look by TVL. Um, and, uh, you know, we're at, uh, you know, pretty much 699,000, touching 700K. So you can see here, I'm sharing on my screen, uh, some of the other projects and what their TVL looks like. So I think that's a huge win, guys, to to uh, be able to to be here, you know, in these rankings uh, based on TV health and growth uh, in a very positive light, uh, as well as uh, something that's not being shown here. You know, we have also extra a lot of extra liquidity in the intelligent liquidity controller that's not being calculated here, right? So that you know we're actually you know way above that, uh, which is great. But uh, just based on, you know, the contract that it's looking at here with the TVL, we, we are in a very, very good standing. That is a win, guys. Win, 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 win. That's amazing. One day we'll be on Moonark right now, and then one day we'll be on DeFi Llama. I can't wait. <laughs> this is great news. Yeah, yeah the DAP radar as well. I mean, there's 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 so much stuff that, that we're going to do. Also, our CMC listing, uh, there's, there's, you know, all, all of the, you know, important things. That's all coming in the way. We've, we've put our focus to to really, you know, get the launch and, and get everything working right with our DApp and and uh, the growth and everything we're doing. But now we're starting to take care of the little kind of clerical things like this, which are important. Uh, so I'm going to post a link here to the Moonark app. Really good resource. A very nice man who's the uh, developer of that uh, wonderful portal. And uh, we've done business with him before, and he, he was instrumental, too, during our private and, and pre-sale, helping us, because he, he also has a very big community of investors, obviously, that uh, that are on Telegram, and uh, they participate on the site. So there is the uh, Moonark. There we go. Oh, that's great, man. So you know, you know, I'm a statistics sort of uh, addict, right? So I'm going to be spending a bunch of time on Moonark. <laughs> Oh yeah, this this product is genius, and he's done yeah. very well from it because he, he's listing. People are looking at TVL; they're looking at what's coming new. Uh, we have banners that we're going to be putting on here, and uh, you know, in phase one, we we use them and it was very effective. So uh, you know, it's 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 time now to go to go and do these things. So those banners uh, most likely will be ready uh, tomorrow and up. So um, yeah, man. <laughs> Pedal to the metal, you know, full throttle, guys. Um, we uh, we understand that this is this this is a tough business, and you really got to put the time in and and work and get out there, win hearts and minds. And uh, you know, we have all you guys here uh, with us, part of that that whole journey. So uh, yeah, very exciting, and thank you, for, thank you for your. Your updates. So, so you said it was the pud, the pudgy penguins. They yeah, the pudgy the... penguins. They they forgot <laughs> to open to the That's IO. Crazy. They passed yeah. boarding uh, clubs, crypto punks. They like no one's passed that in the last six months. So, yeah, unbelievable. Wow. And what what, what kind of a floor price are we are we seeing there? Seven Ethereum's. Okay, That's like what twelve grand right now. Yeah, twelve grand right now. Yeah, so twelve grand is the floor price. They've done I think six hundred and fifty Ethereum's this week, and um and 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 then they have a a miniature project called Little Pudgies, and that made top five as well. <laughs> and <laughs> just goes to show, hey, you can't give up, guys. You know, people. Um, you know, there's always hunger for investment. The world doesn't stop turning, you know, just because, you know, some new cycles and some things, you know, folks are always going to want to seek opportunity and growth and and take a risk and, you know, invest. 
it's it's uh it's something they understand they're they're not going to get that growth you know at their at their job right that's <laughs> most people have a, a base salary or, or you know x amount that they're earning hourly uh throughout the year but you know through investing that's where they could really you know have a difference and, and reach their financial goals so we don't think Absolutely. that's going to end anytime soon we've been through these cycles before we understand the the psychological um you know components and, and cycles and the, you know the whole fear greed index doing what it's supposed to do time and time again and um you know i think that's that's why arc is is going to have such an impact because as folks are understanding that you know the the safe you know stable play is is really you know the play right now and and for probably some, some very long time to come you know we're we're going to be here to receive them and we're going to be here to make them a, a great proposition of sustainable yields great returns and uh man these these uh spark rewards are just just fantastic amazing so uh yeah we're mm -hmm. gonna keep growing keep doing what we love to do keep deving keep building keep getting this crypto everybody here today got their crypto uh folks are are, are following their strategies a lot of them are on the uh auto allocation and uh sitting back and letting the investment uh continue to grow so um yeah a lot of happy a lot of happy folks happy days absolutely yeah no uh i think tomorrow i'm going to talk a little bit about pudgy penguins because because it's one of those stories man where like where everyone wrote them off it's it's the proper american <laughs> story where right like it's been through detox it's been cleaned out and 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 everyone sort of written it off and then for them to hit top 5 and then take the top uh, take, take top the, the number 1 on open sea that's that is a recovery and a half Oh, I love stories like that. So we'll look into it. We'll look into their team a little bit and, and see what uh, caused the, the hype. Um, th those are kind of stories we want to hear. Beautiful, man. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to it. Is there anyone else that has a question or a comment for tonight's podcast? I think we're reaching uh, the end one. for this evening. Go ahead, sir. Yes. So I just came home. So I was listening the whole time. Yeah. Anyway, so I went to Discord uh, last night, and then I and uh, there's a crypto news channel, right? That she created. Mm -hmm. So I picked three yes. articles. It is about like um, SEC uh, is ready to uh, swing the hedge emers to the exchanges, and then also ADA uh, articles. So would, would ADA be a good uh, investment for 2023? That's on one article. And there, so I pick another article. But so while we are discussing that one, um, we focus on the what would be the first target that SEC pick? And then we thought maybe Binance. So, and then also, you know, ARC is running on the Binance margin, right? So what mm -hmm. would be the best way to uh, prepare the worst uh, case scenarios and things like that? So G and you, Art, and anyone else who are listening to this podcast, what do you think about uh, that? So who, what target, so what, what would be the first target that SEC will pick? Do you have any idea? I just think right now the SEC um, need to go and study DeFi a little bit because everything Gary Gensler defines is turning out to be flawed. <laughs> I, like I'm very disappointed in, in, in what the SEC are doing. I think XRP will win their battle uh, in the starting uh, sort of quarter of uh, 2023. I think uh, there's a bunch of education that needs to take place on SEC and when it comes to Binance, I don't think that they're going to come after Binance because Binance has a financial holdings in the Middle East and in, in Dubai. So I think there's a bunch of other things that the SEC need to keep their eyes on. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion on the SEC. I, I think the XRP thing is, is what's going to define 
how they go after other projects. But one thing I would say um, that happened in Brazil with regulation, right? This is like a sample of what's going to happen where, where a lot of meme coins and a lot of these, uh, you can say scammers, uh, will be caught out and will be taken to court. So that's one thing that I found po- a net positive that comes out of governance, where where folks that put their money into pre-sales and then having it, having that being rugged get, uh, around them is not a good experience. It puts people off from, from, from DeFi and the utility of it. So I hope, like, if the SEC are going to go after folks, it's these it's these meme coins. I hope uh, that these meme coins don't get like advertisement slots on Times Square and that kind of stuff. They they don't deserve it. I mean, like, u- utility deserves its attraction, and utility deserves to be top ten in OpenSea and top ten in DeFi Llama. So uh, there's a bunch of things I want the SEC to to kind of look at because those are the important parts. Uh, but Binance, as I said, I don't. Uh, I, I hope I'm never proven wrong on this, but I think Binance is secure for now. Okay. Yeah, I I, I tend to agree with you on that, uh, Z. And we've already we've already seen. Um, you know, Binance uh, deal with 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 their hack years ago and step up, and uh, I think win a lot of trust and confidence from investors. And uh, we've seen you know them have issues with the European regulators and get cut out of uh, the whole. Uh, uh, they call it here SEPA, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, internal uh, system mm-hmm. uh, for European. Uh, think of like uh, interbank uh, transfers. And uh, they established your P2P platform. I mean, it's amazing what, what they're able to do and service your customers. You know, people didn't get stuck just because they lived in Europe and they couldn't transfer out their funds to uh, their bank accounts anymore. Uh, they were able to partake into their P2P platform completely shielded and covered through the escrow of those transactions um, between, you know, their 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 members. So somebody uh, would get into a um, transaction, you know, I need to, uh, you know, sell a thousand USDT and I need the equivalent in euro. And, uh, you know, within 10 and 15 minutes, the transaction is done between the two parties. Um, mm-hmm. The, you know, Binance P2P platform would would verify uh, and you had the security that everybody was KYC and everybody um, played, you know, by the rules and they were able to onboard and offboard um you know through that process um so i I see a lot of uh genius i think a a lot of ways to make sure that you know whatever regulations might come they'll be able to to you know jump those hurdles and eventually which which is what they did here in europe they they got on the right side of you know let's say regulators and they were let back into the um the banking system you know, currently customers uh, in Europe and, and, and through most places in the world. And then you have Binance US, um, which which might be kind of, if they do take action, uh, it would probably really only affect the Binance uh, US customers, right? Mm-hmm. They, they wouldn't be able to, to meddle in the, in the European, Asia, and other uh, investors globally. Uh, but Americans are very resourceful folks and they, um, you know, know how to be able to access to crypto and and uh, be able to onboard and offboard uh, as well so I, I think i think they're fine and um they'll be able to 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 handle any type of uh, situation that's co- that's coming forth and, and if worst case where it comes to worse as you is saying I, I think that uh uh cd could, could go hide out in, in dubai or even in china and uh you know He'll be he'll be fine, or or he could he could pull a um, what do you call this uh, Edward Snowden and go to Russia too. So <laughs> there's many options if they put a target on his head, where the guy could you know operate. Um, and it's almost like that sort of um, narrative of too big to fail at this mm-hmm. point. And um, I, I I think that the uh, the regulars are smart enough to to work things out. You know they're they're obviously reporting on European investors, uh, 
which they weren't before, and, and they they reach a deal. Hey, we'll report and we'll follow, you know, your 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 protocol, um, and and they get let back in. So that's what you need to do. You need to be able to to adapt to regulation. That's what we're going to do here at Arc as well. So um, I I think that's that's sort of my my opinion. I know. Yeah. Brett, no. Brett, do you have I'm an not, opinion I... on that or somebody else? Go ahead. Before Brett goes, I just want to add this. So so on on the 16th of November. Um, Abu Dhabi uh, granted uh, Binance financial services permission. So that's that was quite big for 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 like Binance to get a financial uh, service permission. It's really hard to get in uh, in, in the Middle East. Binance has got oh, yeah. that. So, I mean, right? Vara, that's that, that's Vara. That's a Vara license uh, mm-hmm. that that they have. Uh, it, it's it's kind of interesting because the other qualified member uh, of that was uh ftx and the yeah. uh, the week that the whole thing happened uh S- sbf was supposed to be in dubai for the grand opening i mean they had the office space they had everything ready to go mm-hmm. so um you know kind of kind of an ironic situation there but um no they're they're, they're set you know they're mm-hmm. they're in their place but um yeah did brett or anybody else want to want to Comment on Uderman's question. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of reflect everything that you guys um, have said. Um, I think we're all in kind of agreement there. I mean, Gary Gensler, he's an academic uh, politician, um, so easily corrupted and uh, doesn't actually, um, when I first learned about Gary Gensler, you know, MIT and all that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it turns out he's not a technology guy. He just is a good communicator. And when he taught those classes online that everybody watched, that wasn't his content. Um, so that was kind of a red flag when he got into office, quote unquote. Um, you know, he, he, he was being p- placed to carry out an agenda. Um, he's looked like a fool left and right, um, not just through the XRP case, but then also the line that he's kind of towed um many many uh, even in congress um he's been challenged several times people have asked for his job um so now at this point you know it's it's all bark and no bite um yes they can you know do emotional and some financial damage to certain uh, organizations and things but i think at the end of the day it's just trying to slow down and buy time for the regulation to come and it, it, it's no more than that uh, to me anyway um the uh the real influence is you know the lobbyists and the people that are uh influencing the votes that are going to come and and uh, really bring in regulation at the end of the day uh i think we've said this many times before that uh you know the rest of the world has already viewed uh cryptocurrencies as a, a commodity and i think z you talked about this the other night it may have been last night actually and um and and not a security and uh it doesn't fit the howey test which is what most people think the xrp case is all about mm-hmm. is ushering in a new howey test and the xrp case will set a precedence for for that uh whatever that new test may be um but yeah the sec has looked terrible during the case the the optics on it are really bad um they've looked you know it's been basically amateur hour uh, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of controversy about Henman, who is the previous uh, chairman of the SEC. The uh, conflicts of interest run deep. He slapped the uh, XRP lawsuit the day he was leaving the mm-hmm. SEC, and he went to a uh, a financial firm who had a a very large uh, interest in Ethereum, which they kind of gave a pass to. They they didn't really formally give a pass to it. They just kind of had a, um, it was a conference or, you know, a discussion that, uh, that Henman, they call it the Henman speech that sort of exonerated Ethereum. And they've always said that Bitcoin was not a security, um, but they gave Ethereum a pass, even though there's been so many different videos and, um, and evidence pieces of evidence that have shown that, Ethereum did an ICO 
And those people that benefited from that ICO trickle back up towards Henman, uh, his firm, and some other people that were involved. So there was already a conflict of interest in that speech that was given, even though it was said to be unofficial. Um, so that's always something that could come back, you know, on Ethereum if they wanted to throw another wrench in the market. Uh, they could, you know, they could come back and potentially deem Ethereum not to be a commodity, but a security uh, and take away that free pass that was given to them. But for now, anyway, you know, th there's so many pieces to the puzzle. Um, do you know, Z, who is who's the XLM um, founder that left XRP? He has never been questioned about the XRP he, he held and sold. During the time the whole case was going on, he was selling XRP. <laughs> uh, the Jed uh, McCaleb. Yeah, Jed McCaleb. Jed McCaleb. Yeah, Jed yeah. McCaleb spun off of XRP, basically built a fork of XRP. It's Stellar. now the XLM Stellar Foundation. Uh -huh. um, he was selling XRP the entire time. It was being deemed a security by the SEC and under litigation. Uh, never questioned, never brought to the table. Uh, he had... Um, man million he had millions of xrp basically became a billionaire selling xrp during the entire uh this entire case has been opened so there's just so many weird little plot twists and um you know political agendas going on here and narratives that are playing out and you can just throw all of these other you know the ftx the celsius the luna that you know all of these things sort of as this fear campaign against crypto take your eyes away from you know what DeFi is really all about what DeFi can can uh, provide to the people and make it all about litigation make it all about regulation make it all about uh you know sec and gary gensler and this whole storyline um that's taken a lot of the attention away from what i think could be you know the real story behind blockchain and and um and cryptocurrencies which is um, you know, empowering people and uh, giving them the choices that, uh, you know, they they won't may not they may not have access to just because people aren't aware of it. Um, they aren't getting accurate information. They're seeing the story in the headlines. As you mentioned, Z, it's just been basically a year of scare tactics and fear and, and not about what's really being developed behind the scenes and organizations like um, Polkadot and where there's advancements being made um, in NFTs and um, mm. in true decentralized finance, you know, peer-to-peer uh, -peer side, as you mentioned, Atlas, and some things that are happening because they don't want us to own our own money at the end of the day. They want it to be a closed system, a centralized system. And so I think we're going to see these kind of narratives play out. I think that the XRP case will end up being the precedents that they're looking for for regulation. But I think it won't be what people expect. I think it will be, um, there'll be a give and take, I think, at the end of the day. I think that the SEC will get part of what they want for regulation. And I think uh, Ripple will be free to do their business as a, um, you know, a network company, a network and software company. Um, and it's possible that XRP uh, could be some kind of hybrid new uh, not a commodity, not a security, but some other kind of regulated, um, you know, token at the end of their or cryptocurrency. Um, and, and maybe it's it's a they they define something new that, that we're not expecting, you know, as a utility coin of some type um, that they can't be held individually in wallets and uh, will will need to be with a broker or a financial institution that's you know, quote unquote, regulated and approved to be able to hold that that token. So, you know, I, I think that the, the jury's still out. I think we'll see how things develop. Um, but yeah, this the whole Gary Gensler thing is a little disturbing. Um, and the way things have been handled by Congress, by people who really aren't in the know, that aren't educated, and they're following the lead of, of somebody like Gensler and getting information from mainstream media, lobbyists, and other things that have special interests that aren't necessarily in the best interest of the people, so. Yeah, I, I think what happens is um, more than anything, it just slows progress down. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not in the fear of like regulation or anything. I just I'm I'm just in the fear of things being slowed down to such a T. Um so hopefully um you know we get through this storm and and just like Forrest Gump we're we're filled with shrimp on our on our on our ships. <laughs> yeah. and, and and that that's that's what it, it's always been like that. Like this is not nothing new. We've had this in in the early 2000s. We've had this in the dot com domain uh uh default we've we've seen this happen over and over again and and, and it's going th- the same thing's going through with uh, with crypto what's really happening is is wall street gets their gets their price action on the stocks or on the cryptocurrencies and they get to stack up and and, and go back up 10x on bitcoin on ethereum 100x in DeFi, and and these things are just um uh, like, like the gary glenn gensler thing is is disturbing uh and it just exposes uh what centralized governance can is really capable of currently where if, if i was gary gensler i would have the head of like the top top firms uh, be part of my team and to know that on his team there's only a couple of bankers uh that don't know about uh, uh peer-to-peer uh, protocols is is very uh <laughs> i think that's more disturbing than anything that he has no experts on his on his board um when, when you're looking through these things so so that's that's pretty interesting uh but apart from that yeah that's that's why like i i gave those top nine uh, articles i mean those, those headlines because i want people to understand that you know we have all this fear mongering going out going on but the reason you have the fear mongering is so people can buy cheap it, it's it's for Wall Street and, and JP Morgan to praise DeFi and then dismay DeFi uh, so they can get their price action. And they've done the same thing with the dot-com bubble, uh, bubble. And we've seen the same thing, uh, previously when, when we went, when, when we went off Brentwood, um, and we went off the gold standard. So, um, yeah, I think there's a bunch to happen in the ripple thing. And then that will, um, that will at least like sort, sort of, uh, put SEC in their place that they need to, be more progressive and, 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 and whilst the SEC is like, I think, I think America is like, the, it used to be the most adaptable place for new technology. And now America is falling behind Singapore, is falling behind the Emirates, Qatar, and it's falling behind Malta. I mean, upcoming things like El Salvador is, is making more progress in crypto. So that, that's the issue the SEC happened is like the more they delay things, the more they they get left behind, and and it comes to a point where even if Binance US gets banned, right, the, the worst case scenario, everyone goes to Abu Dhabi <laughs> to open up their accounts. Everyone goes to Singapore. Uh, so we have a a new world um, where, where where I think the BRIC uh, sort of countries are much more pro crypto, and and those were the countries that Vitalik Buterin went on a tour of, right? He went to Russia, he went to China, he went to India, uh, he went to Brazil. And and these are the countries that are showing the most progress in uh, in cryptocurrencies on both sides, the regulation side and the decentralization side of things. So, so yeah, as usual, you demand doesn't just get get his answer; he gets the whole uh, scope. <laughs> yes, yes. So today I'm gonna pick another articles among among them. It'll be uh, XRP and also NFTs. So yeah, I read it, and then it's interesting. It's very educational. I think very helpful for anyone going to DeFi and, and crypto. Let's get this crypto. Let's get it. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just going to ask you, um, what's your um, take on you know some of the African countries? They're able to do blockchain transactions, you know, through a text message on that end. Uh, are you familiar with that? It's it's I've been I read an article about that. You know, like uh, Nigeria, South Africa, um, a lot of the African countries could send and receive Bitcoin. Um, they don't even need a smartphone; they just need a or an internet. They just need yeah, just yeah. a, a phone nice. device to do that that's with them. Nice. I and that's how, how is that working? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, currently when you go through Africa, the problem with the with the investor is you have such high inflation and and such numbers where 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 the Zimbabwean dollar the Nigerian dollar becomes a cryptocurrency just by its uh, base point. So you uh, so what they're doing is they're enabling folks that want to move their money from France and 
because because remember like like sort of africa is is colonized at such a point where you have portuguese following you have french following you have spanish following and you have a uh, sort of zulu and, and and other sort of followings of english uh, heritage so folks that like live abroad and you have sort of foreign africans they want to be able to bring, uh, send their money back to to their home countries to like help their families their mm-hmm. villages and and up till now they've not had a good uh, intermediary and that's that's why Hoskinson went on tour of all the african nations and and it's great news to know that i think i believe nigeria uh and what was the other country um are the first uh you can say um uh, you can say test uh test uh, nets for for sms so so over a text message you can send 0.5 ethereum 0.02 bitcoin to your loved ones and they get deposited straight to your bank i think i think that's something i want to talk about even more cuz that goes into like real estate and into many other things yeah they've they've had those systems for many years um before crypto they've been able to move money around um, especially there's a lot of them that are unbanked. So it's a credit system where you go to the, you know, to, to do business with someone and, uh, you credit their account through a text message and, you know, then they go to the supplier and they, they do that too. They've, they've been having that for years. It's, it's pretty advanced. Um, yeah, but yeah, they got, they got their exchanges. They got, they got their operations, uh, over there, uh, as well. One thing uh, I'll say, uh, realtor is like one thing because I was in Asia earlier this this year, and and the same things happening in Africa, where the uh sort of you can say the four G five G providers, the mobile telecom companies, are becoming the banks, and uh, like for example in in Pakistan, uh, Jazz Cash and and another thing called ePay. Easy pay. So these the, the, these protocols are like they're like four G companies, like mobile companies, but they become they're becoming the banks, and and a lot of like banking when it comes to wire transfer, when it comes to um, uh, like sending money over SMS or through the app, it's all happening through the bank. Now. I mean, through 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 the mobile provider, and and that's what's happening in um, in, in in Africa right now, where there's there's a few companies. It, they it started off in South Africa. Uh, I forgot the developer's name, uh, Ngako, I think his, his name was, but he uh, he started off the service of SMS and, and having the mobile networks because the banks uh, have failed, uh, uh, have failed uh, the people, especially in COVID times. People weren't able to go to the ATM to, to make a transaction because these are cash-based uh, currencies. Uh, I mean, like nations, right? They're the third world nations that, that, that need cash all the time. So for, for, for like these mobile companies to take the step, uh, they first made money electronic that way where, where you can send text messages like Atlas's, but now they're, now, now you're able to do uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, which is pretty cool. So this, the, these are things that the, the reason it's good to discuss this is because you can't do these things in, uh, in, in the first world places, right? <laughs> like places like America, uh, the UK and, and Germany. It, it, it's tougher to do these kind of things because the banks are the oligarchs. Uh, uh, the central banks are the monopolies. Um, but in countries like Africa, uh, mobile network providers can become the marketplace for cryptocurrencies, for transfer of ownership. And I, I just can't wait till the, the NFT uh, side gets, um, gets, gets uh, sort of uh, put through the system. So there's a bunch there to happen. We, um, I was hearing, and I don't know if that, if I caught the tail end of it or what, but they were talking about uh, when I was reading the article about the something. It, it said the um, the phone service plant, the phone services, they were trading the um, the phone plan. I mean, like you get so many minutes of talk time, and that's mm-hmm. what they were using for leveraging, or that's what some of the um, the value was there from these um, phone service companies. They were using the the phone minutes and stuff for for collateral or leveraging or something on that end of the value. Is that kind of hit the spot? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. Mm-hmm. They've been doing that for many years. <laughs> the economy, so they load up. They can load up and buy a card. 
right? And then load up the minutes and then transfer them over to the other party to use that as a currency. We're talking really you know, out there in the <laughs> there, there are no banks. But uh, yeah, they, they, they have these local economies completely held up by that. Awesome. It's such, so, so creative, you know, for, for areas like that to, to have access to, to Bitcoin or have access to, um, to be able to do peer to peer, you know, transfers. You know, and this is I was watching the other night. And if, if some of y'all have Netflix and, and Amazon Prime, you can go on to there and Google cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. They have some great documentaries on on all kinds of stuff, um, cryptocurrencies, bitcoins, the rise, the falls, all the type stuff. And they started talking about how Bitcoin started in, in this and, and why it was started to be able to do like a peer to peer um, you know, business with each other. And that's how um, they didn't have banks. They didn't have currency a long time ago. I mean, back in the, the old, old days, I mean, it was just you trade this for this with your neighbor or whatever. And, and that's kind of how things are getting to now, but on a high tech um, level. I mean, obviously we're doing it through internet and through blockchain now versus walking to your neighbors and trading him an apple for an orange, you know, peer to peer type thing. And that's kind of where it's getting to. So, I mean, it, it, it's interesting to kind of um, listen to these documentaries and, and kind of how things were evolved and, um, and how things are created with that. So if, um, if any of y'all have access to that, um, do a search and they're usually anywhere between 30 to uh, 120 minutes long. But I mean, just good information, real good stuff. Yeah. Um, on Bitcoin, uh, there's one more article that sort of made the headline. So Hal Finney, a, so a software developer, he's worked on console games. He's worked uh, and he was, he was one of the early uh, cyberpunks, the, the early contributors to Bitcoin. And he was the first uh, uh, person to receive uh, a Bitcoin transaction from Satoshi. Um, so, yeah, really influential person, uh, worth reading up on. And um, what's been announced today is his wife has opened up a, a Bitcoin charity um, uh, for ALS victims. And and they look in, uh, and, and it's going to further go into other things. So... So she sent a tweet out uh, today saying, hi, everyone. This is Fran Finney, wife of Hal Finney, an early pioneer of Bitcoin. I want to let you know about a special event I'm organizing in honor of my husband. Thank you for all your interest in Hal and your support. He would love it. So, so yeah, um, uh, Hal does uh, suffer from ALS. And it's beautiful to see that um, that basically she's taken the, the narrative of, of, of starting a charity uh, event uh, using her personal Bitcoin. So that's that made the big news today. Um, so yeah, that's that's me cleared for it. Um, uh, should we conclude recording now, uh, Atlas, or do you want to keep it going? No, let's go ahead. If there's no other questions, let's go ahead and close it off for tonight. We uh, have done, I think, a two hours and 20 minutes for this evening. I want to thank all you folks for being here tonight, participating. Spark Rewards were really fantastic. We had a live winner, our very own Florida realtor, uh, who's an admin here, a, a part of this fantastic family that is ARC. And uh, we couldn't be happier to see him win uh, tonight. And we look forward to all of you having that opportunity through the coming days, coming weeks, coming years. We um, gave some updates. We, we hope that uh, they were helpful. And for those of you folks that are not here and you're listening to this at a later time, thank you for also participating through listening. Wish you all a great evening, and we will be back tomorrow at the same time, 6 p.m. EST, 11 p.m. UTC. Take care of yourselves. Have a great night.